One thing that I wanted to bring up before I leave the realm of local politics to talk about what's going on in the national stage. The Pensacola shooting. Do you notice how quick that went away? Now, I know that it's lingered a little longer in the Alabama media, partly because there's a guy from Alabama that's kind of the hero of the hour. He's the one that that gave his life trying to protect other people and to find help and to take down the terrorists. So, yeah, that's going to linger a little longer in the state of Alabama. But on the national stage, I didn't see any coverage of it today or yesterday. And you remember that based on what kind of shooting takes place. And granted, I, I get that there were only three deaths and, and eight uh, casualties overall because there were eight people that were injured, three that were killed, and then the shooter, of course, was killed as well. But there have been shootings that had similar death tolls and similar numbers, and still it only garnered a small amount of media coverage. And so you have to ask yourself, and I'm sure that you already know the answer, you have to ask yourself, why is it that this one got so little coverage? Well, I think part of it is fatigue. People, um, they've so overplayed the amount of mass shootings. It's kind of like a few years ago when they did the shark attack thing. Turns out it was actually a low year for shark attacks, but I was, I don't know, it was like five or six summers ago, they did every single shark attack and it became a story and people believe there was an epidemic, even though there were actually less shark attacks than there had been in previous years. It's the same kind of thing. You're getting some story fatigue. And so, I think that is at least a part of it, that they know that the stories aren't getting nearly as much viewers as they used to. But the bigger part, and I think I can make a much more compelling case for this one, is that it does not fit the media's narrative. Because the media, which is absolutely in the tank for the left, they have such a vested interest in trying to pass gun control and regulations that they deem as necessary that when a mass shooting does not fit that narrative... They're really just not that interested in it. And you look at all the details of this story, it kind of cuts against everything in that narrative. First of all, there is a 9mm handgun. So we're not talking an AR-15. We're not talking an AK-47. This is a semi-automatic Glock 45 9mm handgun. So there's not a gun in there that they want to ban there's not really anything they can do with the story from that standpoint. The second part is there are no child victims. Now this would probably garner, because even if it were a crime that had nothing to do with the gun control agenda, if there's children that have been murdered, that does tend to gain more national prestige, but they, there's no, but there's nobody that they can waggle their fingers at and say, ah, see, you don't care about the children. You hate children and want them to die. And that's why you're in favor of the Second Amendment. That's why you do not favor gun control. They can't do that with this story. And so because of that, they don't have as much interest in it. And another one is that the gunman was an Islamic Saudi terrorist. So he's not an American citizen. He's not even, he's, he's not, you know, a citizen that we have to deal with. And so you have the obvious conflict with the way that they view immigration, even though this guy was actually here legally. And then you also have the conflict of them wanting to keep people from talking about Islamic terror and not really put that at the, fr the forefront. And so there's just a ton of reasons why they really have no reason to cover this one. And another thing is there's no white supremacy narrative that they can push out there because they always try to hit that angle whenever they can. They always try to say it was some kind of white supremacist. And I mean, sometimes it is like we, we have had shootings where it occurred because of that, and that was the motivation. We saw that, for example, in the Temple of Life shooting, that it was an, an anti-Jewish person and somebody that believed in white supremacy. We, we saw that with the church in South Carolina, uh, the Emmanuel Church, where the guy shot nine black people because he was a white supremacist. Uh, yeah, those, those things happen, but because this didn't happen with this shooting and it doesn't fit that narrative, and they can't make the guy out to be some kind of a racist, in fact, the guy was a, man, a minority and a Muslim himself, then they can't use it to push that narrative. And so because there is really no narrative that they like that they can push with this shooting, they just don't cover it very much. I mean, if there was ever a testament to how in the tank journalists are for the left, this is it. But here's the thing. To a journalist, none of that stuff should matter. 
To a journalist that is merely covering the news and trying to convey information to you, well, he should give the exact same amount of media coverage to one story as he does to the other if they're similar stories and have similar impact. So why is that not the case? It's not the case because we don't have journalists in the media anymore. We have activists. Now, an activist cares very much whether or not his narrative is being told by a particular story. And that's why he will avoid talking about some stories and he will actively promote others as much as humanly possible. A journalist would give equal coverage to both, or at least similar coverage. An activist is going to pick and choose. And so if you ever needed proof that our media is an activist wing for the Democrat Party, this is about as conclusive as it's going to get, because the media ultimately would rather control you than inform you. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.